four, eight. Hi. Hey, Councilman. You're always welcome to, to enter this side, and uh, you don't have to <laughs> walk uh, along the wall. Walk past all these guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This meeting of the Pontiac City Council is hereby called to order at 4.03 p.m. For the invocation, dear Lord, please bless this budget. <laughs> uh, please rise for the Pledge Amen. of Allegiance. Roll call, Clerk Doyle. Harrington. Present. Goodman. Present. James. Here. McGinnis. Present. Nicholson. Here. Parker. Rutherford. Mr. President, you have a quorum. Thank you. Could I please have a motion uh, to quorum being established? Could I please have a motion to excuse Councilwoman Melanie Rutherford for personal reasons for the meeting, at least part of the meeting? Uh, so moved. Second. It's been moved by Goodman, seconded by Nicholson. Uh, Councilman Parker is with us. He is here present in voting. Let the record reflect. Um, roll call on authorizing uh, the excuse, the excusing of Councilwoman Melanie Rutherford from the meeting for personal reasons. Roll call Clerk Doyle. Goodman? Yes. James? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Nicholson? Yes. Parker? Parker? Yes. Carrington? Yes. Six yeas, no nays. That motion carries. Is there a motion to adopt the meeting agenda as presented? So moved. Support. It's been moved by Goodman, seconded by Nicholson. Uh, any discussions, amendments, clarifications? Hearing no discussion, roll call on adoption of the uh, and approval of the agenda. Clerk Doyle. James? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Nicholson? Yes. Parker? Yes. Harrington? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Six yeas, no nays. That motion carries. Welcome to Budget Orama. This is uh, the first of many City Council special meetings dedicated to the review of Mayor Tim Grimel and his administration's proposed budget for the coming fiscal year. And uh, with that, I want to give the floor to the administration uh, to provide some highlights that has been provided in writing uh, electronically and hard copy to the City Council, uh, and it is accessible to the community as well. Uh, and, of course, these are intentionally held in open meetings so that the community can participate and follow as well. I want to give the floor to the mayor and administration. Uh, first, we'll be focusing on recreation. I want to give the floor uh, for them to emphasize highlights and important conversations uh, before us. Well, thank you uh, so much, President McGinnis. Uh, as uh, you'll uh, see in coming uh, hearings as well, I want to turn the floor over to Deputy Mayor Stevens to, to give a general overview. And then, obviously, uh, 
Becky and, and uh, staff are available to answer questions. I may interject from time to time, but uh, generally uh, Deputy Mayor Stevens is going to be uh, leading the uh, introductions and the discussion when it comes to uh, our budget hearings uh, the coming weeks. So without further ado, Deputy Mayor. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, City Council. So uh, you did receive the the uh, budget proposal, which included the mayor's uh, introductory letter. Uh, just one highlight that I'll say today, and I'll probably say at the beginning of every meeting, just for the sake of those who may have missed uh, the meetings before, there are a couple of things that we want to make sure that you understand that we are working off of. The first is that the the budget year that we're in right now had a three point, approximately three point two um, million dollar structural deficit in that budget. In addition to that, the pension um, allocation that the city has to pay for police and fire went up by approximately one point five million dollars. 1.3 or approximately 1.3 million dollars so that means that we are starting off with a 4.5 million dollar deficit uh, essentially so we had the 3.2 that was already there we had if we kept all of our spending exactly the same we had the pension increase of 1.3 so 3.2 1.3 is 4.5 million dollars that's where we're starting as saying if we kept all of our spending the same as last year, we would have a four and a half million dollar um, operating deficit. <coughs> we do have fund balance. We can do that for a couple of years. But then after a couple of years, we will have no fund balance and we will have to cut. And we will have to cut because if we don't do something different, our, our income line and our expense lines are not currently in trajectories that mean that we are going to be making more money. We're going to be spending down $4.5 million. So the budget that we have prepared um, is approximately a $2.7 million deficit. But that $2.7 million deficit means that we are actually hiring more staff to deliver better services. We are investing in the community. And the idea behind this is that we cannot cut our way to prosperity. We have to change our curves. We have to change our trajectories. And that is what we are attempting to do with the budgets that you will see. So you will see that we are um, investing in personnel. We, we are committed to the idea that everyone in the city needs to have training. And so we have put training funds in there and that that is the general thing that I will say at the beginning of um, all of our sessions. This first session here, we are looking at recreation. And so- Deputy Mayor? Yes. Um, since we have entered the conversation of our starting point- Yes. I think there might be, it might be helpful if the council has any questions or feedback in terms of where <coughs> we're starting at. Yes. Since, and I, I thank you for setting the, helping set the stage. Uh, Pro Tem Carrington, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, President McGinnis. I guess uh, one of my concerns is uh, concerning you stated that um, if you kept the spending the same, it would say $4.5 million structural deficit? Approximately. Okay. So with all the new staff that uh, that's been proposed in this budget, how do you how do we, how do the, the administration plan to uh, balance that in the future? Uh, if we, if we haven't created ways to bring in more revenue? Great question. So the, the way that we're doing this is we have a number of outsourced services right now. And so um, the belief is that when the emergency managers did all of the outsourcing, they were saving the city money. Well, the way that they would have been saving the city money is at the time the city still had many unions and we had pension benefits and, and li pension liabilities. So by outsourcing um, that those staff members, they were able to cut those costs. We don't, we're not in that situation anymore. And so a decade later, whatever those negotiated prices were have increased. And so as we look at those prices now, 
and we look at the um, upcharge that we are paying an outside company to provide those services, we have found that in many instances we can provide those services ourselves, provide those workers with um, very um, good salaries and still spend less money. And so that's how we're able to hire more staff, provide more services and spend less aggregate money. And, and if I could, there, there are a couple of nuances uh, here as well that the deputy mayor did not touch on. Um, number one, uh, it's more accurate to say that the, both the, the structural deficit as the current year's budget was passed back in uh, June uh, and the projected uh, roughly $2.9 million dollar deficit uh, that uh, is included in our proposed budget uh, are general fund deficits. So there are a number of funds at the city, uh, we're really talking about the general fund. A lot of the other funds are designed to fluctuate quite a bit in terms of year-to-year -year spending. For example, our, our road fund, our capital improvements fund. Those funds are, uh, there are elements of operating costs in them, but a lot of those funds are used specifically for capital improvement projects or specific road projects. So those funds it's quite normal and appropriate to have uh, in, in any given year uh, more spending potentially than one takes in. So those are not structural deficit issues. Uh, so we're really talking, when we talk about the deficit, we're really talking about the general fund. Uh, that's, that's number one. Secondly, when we talk about the current fiscal year and we talk about the structural deficit, that is as it was passed uh, last uh, June. And the final deficit number may be different uh, because a lot of the positions that were established went vacant for, for much of the time of this fiscal year, for example. That's not good practice. For example, we have not had a uh, purchasing uh, person here at City Hall managing purchasing and managing contract compliance and things like that for those uh, contracts. So, um, so the, the best comparison is the current fiscal year as it was approved last June, but I do just want to mention that the final deficit as it, come in, it comes in for this year may be different. Um, we also added some positions in the middle of this year, which uh, will, will affect the ultimate number. Um, the other thing is that it's true, uh, as the Deputy Mayor said, that if we, if, if nothing changed in terms of expenditures and revenues, that we would end up with a roughly $4.5 million deficit. Um, much of the changes are on the expenditure side, uh, but one of the proposals we're making is to hire a couple of additional income tax staff so that we can collect additional income tax revenue. It's estimated that we're foregoing right now little over two million dollars in income tax revenue and we believe that by bringing on a couple of additional staff people we can collect about a million dollars more of that uncollected revenue per year so part of what lowers the uh, projected deficit isn't just uh, managing expenditures more appropriately it's also bringing in and collecting more revenue that's currently uh, foregone in terms of collection so it's a combination of those things that are it's actually narrowing this projected deficit to 2.9 million from the uh, what would otherwise be about 4.5 million dollars. Uh, the the last thing I'll say, and this is why it's important to keep in mind that we have these different accounts, is that one of the accounts that we have is a building fund, which is distinct from the general fund. And in the past, the building fund has really only been the building department, uh, which is to say basically Wade Trim's uh, uh, operation. Uh, as you know, part of our proposal would bring those uh, services back in-house. The building department has generated more revenue than it expends. Uh, that's in contrast to the code enforcement folks where it's expended more than the revenue generated. And the answer for that, the reason for, for that discrepancy is pretty straightforward. 
the the uh, building inspectors do a lot of inspection with new construction, uh, new uh, buildings, businesses, where they charge fees to cover their costs. And of course, if people are doing new construction, they have funds and are able to pay those fees. In fact, they have to pay those fees in order to ultimately get the permits that they want. In contrast, uh, code enforcement goes out and issues tickets. And it's oftentimes very difficult to collect on those tickets. We've stepped up our efforts to uh, make sure that we're actually following through and collecting on those tickets. But in the past, there was this discrepancy where code enforcement was running an annual deficit where they were expending more than they were collecting and building uh, was collecting more than they were expending. Part of what we're proposing is putting code enforcement, instead of it being funded out of the general fund, to combine it with building in the building fund. That frees up a lot of money that was otherwise being expended in the general fund that can now be expended in the building fund and be funded with this uh, long-standing kind of annual surplus that the building fund was generating and that was just accumulating there and couldn't be used for other purposes. Why that wasn't done in the past, uh, I don't know. Uh, but this is an important a uh, means by which to make sure that we're providing funding for code enforcement uh, without continuing to drain the general fund for that purpose. Uh, any Anything to add to the nuances that I've added here? I know that I've added a lot of complexity in short order I, here, I have an but I wanted to be committee. kind of fully, fully uh, um, explaining the dynamics here. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing uh, that's important to point out too with uh, uh, gap accounting principles, we are uh, realizing the expense for the new grants department, uh, but unless it is there, we have a commitment letter or there is, we're in the second or third year of receiving revenue on some of these grants that we've already received, you won't see if we have um, you know, aspirations to apply for, for, of course we have a, a huge amount of aspiration to apply for, for future grants as we grow that grant department, you won't see the revenues um, from those potential grants if they're not currently committed to or in the second or third year of revenue being received. So you'll see all of this expense, but only a very small portion of the revenue. That is correct. That's absolutely true. And, and I'll add a little bit to that to say that uh, we're, we're going to be aggressively seeking some grant dollars, at least for a period of several years, to fund as many of the new positions we're proposing as possible. Uh, Ms. Borngesser has already started working on that. and. We're cautiously optimistic that we'll be successful in attracting revenue for many of those positions, first and foremost, the positions included in the grant management department. But because that uh, has not been realized yet, we are not including any of, of that grant funding in our proposal. So we're cautiously optimistic that we'll see a significant reduction in the projected deficit because we'll see grant dollars brought in to fund some of those positions. And of course, as you know, and as we've talked about in the past, creating that grant man grants management department is in large part so that we can bring CDBG funding back in-house. And with that, we can use up to 20% of that CDBG funding for administrative costs. Our budget also does not take that into account. And the reason for that is simple. We need to create the grants management department first before we can bring the CDGG dollars back in-house and realize that 20%. Uh, so for all those reasons, uh, the uh, more of these positions will be funded from external sources than initially meets the eye, but that won't happen on day one, July 1st. It will happen, we're confident, during the course of the coming fiscal year. Any further, Councilman Nicholson? No, thank you. Councilman James? Yes, uh, in regards to putting building fund or putting the uh, code enforcement under the building uh, fund, which I think is basically a good idea, but will that cover the cost of these additional code enforcement people? So I think you're going to add about five. Is that is that going to cover so, all of your new hires as well? So yes, that will cover all of the new hires as well. Um, I believe that the mayor brought that up just as an example of the types of things we were doing to continue to free up uh, funds in the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm happy to answer any of those questions, but I would just like to um, say that I know we only have until six o'clock. And so if, if we could direct our questions to youth rec in the, the mayor's office, but I am happy to answer whatever questions you want to answer tonight. Any additional questions in terms of the starting budget assumptions of where we are broadly? All right, with that, Deputy Mayor Stevens, uh, we're looking at youth uh, at, for recreation, but specifically, first up, youth recreation. All right, thank, thank you, um, Council President. And so going into this, uh, a, a little bit of history, which I, I think um, Council President will, will enjoy, because um, he and I are both history buffs. So if you go back uh, far enough in the city of Pontiac, all of what we're talking about right now was actually part of DPW. So the, the whole youth rec um, program was housed under the Department of Public Works. Um, at some point in time, the emergency managers slowly dismantled that and we got to a point where we are today where you have um, a youth rec millage with no direct oversight, a senior millage with no direct oversight, and parks just kind of sitting out by itself. What our budget proposes is to... If, if, if I could just, just amplify yeah. that, it's even worse than that because we have not had a single city employee who is solely focused on parks in well over a decade. So just think about that. We have all this potentially beautiful park land. It is beautiful park land. It's not well maintained most of the time. But we don't have a single employee who's focused on maintaining that land as their sole job. I mean, it's stunning. I mean, it really, frankly, stunning. So it's not that parks is just out there. There is no parks department. It, it falls under DPW as just sort of a, well, if something happens in the parks that we're aware of, we let DPW know about it. But everything else about the parks, the grass mowing, the garbage collection, is all outsourced. And there's nobody here at City Hall who's solely focused on the parks. Sorry to interject, but I, I think it's stunning to think about that, truly stunning. And it explains a lot when people wonder, why are our parks in such terrible condition? Thank you, Mayor. And so what this budget does is it's, it looks to recreate a Parks and Rec um, division, which is actually going to be not housed under Department of Public Works, but it's going to be its own department with um, a department head who will be actively coordinating and overseeing these three different activities. Um, and so as a first step to that, we have... Um, I want to give you yes. a, a further history lesson. <laughs> as you know better than I do, if you go back further, there was a standalone department. Yes. It was not under DPW. That was in part a cost-cutting okay. measure in the early to mid-2000s when they were massive deficits with, as the revenues that the city previously had were massively uh, leaving. Uh, this standalone department did exist. Yes. I think they might have called it Parks and Recreation. I, they did, uh, but but so I just want to go even further with that. But yeah, no, you're correct. You you are you are definitely correct. Um, so we are in essence, you know, what's old is new. So we we are recreating um, the department and looking to coordinate the activities of these things because, quite frankly, where is most of the youth rec um, activity going to take place? It's going to take place in the parks. Um, a lot of senior activities could actually happen to take place in the parks if the parks were manicured and, and properly, you know, kept up and cared for in that manner. So you'll have a, a director of um, recreation who will be looking to harmonize the activity uh, across these three sectors. Um, as a first step, we have um, made job offers to a youth recreation manager and an assistant youth recreation manager. Um, not knowing when those individuals would actually come on board, but knowing that we had to have activities planned and ready to go for the summer. We do have some um, summer activities that we have already worked to plan. 
uh, our our managers will be starting next week, and so we will be handing that plan off to them to review, to determine, you know, how much of that plan do they keep, how much of it do they change for themselves. But so that that's the the first step that that you see here, and so you see you see that we have programmed approximately four hundred and seventy thousand out of the million dollars in youth rec funding that will be um, generated. So that leaves you know a a little over five hundred thousand dollars for the youth rec manager to um, augment their their offerings, or also to put towards the the item that I know everyone is going to be you know excited to talk about, and that is you know to put towards an actual um, brick and mortar building. You will see that we have not. Um, put a brick and mortar building in this budget and the reason for that is very simple We have spent these first four months looking at a number of different sites um, to to propose as as that site for the youth um, rec building the criteria were fairly simple but difficult to obtain. So we were looking for something that was centrally located and very easily accessible from all corners of the community. We were looking for something that had enough space that it could um, not only have a, a gym but could have an outside <clears throat> rec field and potentially even have a auditorium added to it, as well as um, general space for activities such as um, after school tutoring and, and other enrichment activities. We have we have narrowed down some some possibilities that we will be going into deeper depth with once we have our, our managers on board, but it's not in this budget because we haven't identified a final site to bring to council to ask for your approval on spending money on that exact site. So I want an, an, an auditorium is what simple people like me call a <laughs> swimming pool. Just uh, <laughs> FYI, uh, very, an indoor swimming pool. <laughs> uh, to, to put a finer point on, so youth recreation manager, assistant youth recreation manager, sports coordinator, and youth recreation assistant. I see for salaries and wages under youth sports. Does that apply for sports coordinator and youth recreation assistant? Yes, sir. And so when we're looking for recreation facility salaries and wages, is that referring to one or part of the salaries of one of the other positions for youth recreation? Just trying to get a sense of yeah. where the uh, various salaries and is some of the um, salaries going to come out of COVID-19 expenditures or not? No. Um, so I believe that the when you look at what is it? Or perhaps is youth sports salaries and wages covering three of the positions? It's okay if you don't have it committed immediately. No, I don't I don't have it committed to knowledge. Um the finance director may know how it got split up specifically, but Generally, I believe that the youth sports covers the two director, the two managers, and the covers the two managers and the um, sports manager, and then the other and the part timers. Yes, correct, and and they are on the second page. That is correct. So, so yes, the youth sports is where you see the the two managers and the sports coordinator, which would be full time positions. So it's fair to understand that the four in the um, organizational chart that are dealing with youth recreation, that the entirety of their salaries come out of the um, the youth recreation millage. Yes. Okay. And uh, for the community's benefit. What's proposed here is levying the full amount of the youth recreation millage. In the past, a portion of it um, has been authorized, and this, it would generate an anticipated $1,033,000 for youth recreation. And so just wanted to help give people the context. So as you said, you gave a number of 400-some thousand that will be salaries, leaving about 500,000 balance for other operational and programming purposes for youth recreation, correct? 
so not just salaries um so salaries and um some some equipment i was just saying that we did not program all of the money we put something in place so that the manager when they came on board would have something to work with but they would also have additional funding that could that they could um, mold and ask counsel for but more importantly we understand that there is you know overall at the city there's 3.2 million dollars currently in restricted funding to put toward a brick and mortar facility in addition to that the millage is still producing money every year so if we can program all of our programs and all of our um, staffing in less than that that additional money that comes in we can leverage on that eventual brick and mortar building right so we that brick and mortar building does not have to be confined to 3.2 million dollars it can be 3.2 million dollars plus five hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever that can leverage in um um borrowed funds all right so it when you see on the second page here for the Youth Recreation uh, Millage Fund 208, um, you've got the estimated revenues, the appropriations, and then what you're identifying is that there is an intentional sort of balance, if you will, that we in the Correct. future can uh, you know, make further appropriation decisions. Yes, sir. Okay. Councilman Nicholson and then Pro Tem Carrington. So that uh, that balance of nearly five hundred thousand dollars is what i wonder what the approach will be as far as are we going to have the management of this department come in set their own budget and then bring that to us as a whole budget or are we going to see those piecemeal as uh as items i, I mean five hundred thousand dollars worth of items could potentially be a lot of amendments it could potentially be a lot of amendments but the the reality of the situation is they will come in they will look at what we have already put together um they inevitably will have changes to that. And when they make those changes, that will be the budget amendment that we will bring to um, city council. And it's not anticipated that we're gonna have lots of amendments over time, mm -hmm. but I can easily see where we get a situation where a donor says, hey, um, actually, we have that situation right now. We have a donor that has contacted the city and said, I would like to sponsor a youth tennis program and so the question might be oh that's great how much money are you going to put toward it and the amount of money that they put toward it may not be quite sufficient enough for us to actually do it it wasn't contemplated so we need to ask for an additional couple of dollars to actually make that program a program that is you know worthy of our students I don't doubt that the finance director is um, has this intention, but um, for the, the purposes of reviewing the finances on a regular basis, I hope that we'll consolidate some of these accounts. I mean, we're looking at the, the it gets down into the deed, fine detail of motor, fuel, oil, and lubricants as one of the accounts and what we spent specifically just on that. So I hope that um, when we put that budget together, we can maybe reconsider um, some of these major accounts so there's not 300 of them that get so... You know, that so actually that that's a great question. That is something that the finance director and I have talked about. And um, I will just ask him briefly to make sure that I did understand the budget that you see in front of you and all of these different line items. We can absolutely choose to take out line items, but this is actually modeled off of the state and it is a requirement that we have these. If you could take the microphone just so reporting purposes. <laughs> but yeah, so the final column is what the mayor's recommended budget is, utilizing many fewer of the GL accounts than the current budget. Right, but that, that's for the purposes of allowing the management to come in and plug those items into those holes. I'm saying I would prefer less accounts if that's possible. Yeah, so uh, uh, um, certainly follow what what what, uh, what you're saying and I think as the deputy mayor pointed out we've had that discussion to the council president's point some of the reasons why we we and you'll see this as we move forward we have started to leave some of the accounts blank 
with the you know idea that all of these uh, accounts, particularly where they're smaller numbers, could very well be put into another category. What the deputy mayor was pointing out, um, there, there's there's state guidelines in terms of you know the general ledger accounts. They don't dictate you know that we have to have all of these accounts, but they they provide. Um, guidance in terms of if you're going to create a general ledger account, this is kind of the process. Um, and as the deputy mayor indicated, we certainly are looking at trying to, uh, I think, get the uh, structure of our general ledger accounts more in line with, with what we're doing operationally. A lot of these things are just kind of year-to-year carryovers, and we've just been you know, probably using them because they're there. They don't necessarily best reflect where we are as a city and, and how our operations are done. Um, and I think that's, again, something we're aware of and, and are, are going to look to, um, you know, adjust our, our operations accordingly. Thank you. And, and then I'll thank, thank you, um, Director Carrington. And then also to your point, uh, Councilman Nicholson, the youth, the, the recreation is not a, a good example of this. Um, the clerk's office is a better example. But the in order to to properly track certain spending and, and break it down to its component parts, we, we actually have these different um, internal divisions. So even though we think of something as, hey, that's the clerk's office, it's like, well, if you really want to know how much money is only spent on elections or you want to know how much money was actually spent on marijuana, you have to break it out that way. But that's, we, as we go forward, we will determine in time do we want to have youth sports actually broken out, or will it all be underneath recreation facility, right? So that's, that's something that we'll, we'll determine over time. Mm -hmm. Right, and do we need one that's for uniforms versus recreation supplies versus tro awards and trophies? <laughs> right. Yes. Bindery services. <laughs> Carrington, then Parker, then James. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, President McGinnis. Uh, the next question, actually, you, you, you actually mentioned upon it, is, is that uh, the $3.2 million are restricted. Yes. And I guess uh, as I looked through the document, I didn't see that in the narrative of uh, the, the budget okay. uh, or in any funds. So could you kind of tell me what was your rationale behind leaving that out? Yeah, ab absolutely. So, um, and I'll, I'll take a stab, but I will let the finance director give you the the proper answer if I um, mess it up. So you don't see that $3.2 million in this budget because this is the budget it, this is the budget of funds that we are asking you to appropriate and spend. That money is in fund balance. And so we don't have a budget for fund balance. It's there, it's staying there. And so that's why you don't see it here because we're not asking you to appropriate it. Oh, thank you. Parker, then James. Thank you, Brother President. I just have one, as I look at the budget, and I know we don't technically have a recreational facility, so is we're currently using the UWM sports complex. Is that amount monthly rental included in this, or what we're paying, or are we paying? The good thing is that we are not paying for our serve, for use of UWM. That is a charitable contribution that the organization is making to the city of Pontiac. Okay, then my next question is I noticed uh, line item uh, 756 you didn't attribute anything for overtime wages. You don't expect that there's gonna be any? So we don't expect that because we have um, our, our salaried employees who don't receive overtime, and then we have our part-time employees who hopefully are going to be part-time employees and will not be working over 40 hours a week, therefore would not actually qualify for overtime. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Councilman James. Yes, uh, I would, would like for the finance manager or yourself, uh, Deputy Mayor, to just take this, you know, walk through this quickly mm -hmm. for us uh, and let us know what these are supposed to mean in terms of, you know, how, what is, what's presented here. Just kind of walk through this line item by line item. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, first we have, so first I will say that you have a couple of different 
um, subsections. You have recreation facility, and then you also have youth sports. Um, well, let's start with yes. the, the top, the current property taxes. That that last item is a one million sixty eight eight hundred. So just kind of as you walk down through it and let us know what that actually means. Okay, so uh, going going down the income line, you have property tax. So that's that's the millage being um, levied. We understand. I All right. Um, property tax chargebacks. So um, everyone doesn't actually pay their tax. So that's actually gets taken off the top. And then you have local community stabilization um, sharing. So that those are funds that we get from uh, Lansing every year, which brings us down to that one million sixty eight thousand eight hundred dollar mark. So that's our income. That that's the money that we have to spend on youth recreation. I, I do want to interject now. Um, I was going to wait to see when yes. it might come up organically, but Williams International Educational Fund, so the budget currently for this year, fiscal year is still continuing, $150,000, yes. and at least through the end of April, 70000 of that was realized. But we do anticipate, at least based on our current budget, that $150,000 would come in and that um, $150,000 was budgeted, although no activity detected, at least through April. So what do we know about that funding? I know we're t that's not for the fiscal year to come, but yeah. does that get absorbed into some other element of the budget uh, and leave the youth recreation world, or is it going to be expended or already has been expended, and we should sort of consider it off the books? I'm mm -hmm. I know no, no, that, that is publicly, but I don't know in all practicality the full nature of that um, funding that came from Williams International. No, so that, that is actually a, a very good question. Um, so the, the short answer is it leaves the Youth um, Recreation Department. The long answer is, just as it says, Williams International Educational Fund. These are funds that William, Williams International has pledged to the city as part of, for lack of a better term, community benefits um, for the um, services that they had received when they invested in the city. And so those funds are meant to provide um, scholarships and training opportunities for students and young adults. So they come out of youth rec and they go into um, just a different spending category. Okay. Uh, Legislative Council Sharp. Just to piggyback on that, I have a question, but it was my understanding that that's an annual amount that they're giving, they're pledging um, for adult technical training. The prior mayor put it in for youth rec. So my question to piggyback off of the president's question is if you're taking it out for youth rec, it's it's actually um, money that they're giving annually. So where are you going to put it throughout the budget? Because that continues, correct? So it it does continue. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit that I will have to look at yeah. their um, agreement because it does not continue into perpetuity, right? It, it does have an end date on it. So I have to look to see when that actual end date is. But again, the idea, the reason why you don't see it here mm -hmm. in, in the budget for this year is because those funds were never meant no. to be part of youth recreation. Correct. Correct. They were meant for training and, and education. And, but has any been utilized this fiscal year or should we anticipate that that is an accumulating amount that hasn't been delved into? It's okay if you don't know. Just well, the, the budget documents suggest that it has been utilized this fiscal year, and I think the reason for that is that for the first half of this fiscal year, before any of us were in office, they were essentially commingled with the youth recreation funds. Uh, and so that's where they where they are to the extent that we have a surplus in the youth recreation uh, funds as of the end of this year it would be reflected there but to the extent that there is no year-to-year -year surplus um, in the youth recreation column is because they were all spent but at least based on what was lodged um, you know in terms of expenditures not a lot you know it's not reflecting that through April 30th any 
that was in the youth right. recreation budget has been expended. Um, but at least on paper, if we take out the whole $150,000 Williams International angle, it does show that at least for the recreation facility element that it, uh, less was expended at least through part of this year, fiscal year, than what was budgeted. And uh, that looks to be true as well under youth sports mm -hmm. as well, which isn't impacted by the, the Williams International mm -hmm. question. Um, and that's very much in large part because of this new administration's intervention when it comes to the previous youth recreation facility. But I just want to share that to the community's benefit, mm -hmm. at least based on our, our expectation, is that youth recreation millage funds that were appropriated, um, that there is not a, uh, there's not a strong concern that we're running over budget for this current fiscal year. There is not. Councilman Parker, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, my question uh, is, does the money, if it's not used in this fiscal year, roll over to the next fiscal year? Yes. Uh, the, the hesitation was, how, how, was it, how was it going to answer that? Um, for the Williams International Fund um, training money, yes, it does. For the, and it, and it stays in a, in, a, in a training fund until we actually, you know, expend it. For all of the rest of the money, for the millage money, um, yes. And what happens is it goes into fund balance, but it goes into fund balance restricted because these funds can only be used for youth recreation, which would include um, a, a brick and mortar facility. And that's how you have the $3.2 million that has been set aside and is only eligible for that and will only be called out once we have a brick and mortar facility that we are asking the council to invest in. So essentially whatever we don't spend gets added to that total. And then, right. uh, I'll go for it. Yep. And so my other question was, uh, I think uh, the attorney that mentioned that this money was originally earmarked for adult education. The Williams training? International right. money. Williams, yeah. So are we partnering with the school board or anybody to help to know that that money is there and that they can use it or since we don't have a, a place to use it per se? I don't know if I answered that. No, 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 no. You, 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 asked, you asked that question um, beautifully. So your question was, hey, we are receiving um, approximately $150,000 a year from Williams International for education and training. We, the city, do not have the capacity to actually do that. Are we partnering with someone to make that happen? The short answer to that question is um, over the course of time that the mayor and I have been in office, we have not. We have been focused on looking at the operations of the city and how do we get the um, city to a point where we can actually start reinvesting um, and building our capacity to do just that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we'll continue um, down the roster. Uh, in terms of expenditures, I see that transportation services, what was budgeted was $84,000 presumably to assist children from being able to get to the Gulf Drive facility, that that was not ultimately uh, expended this current fiscal year. No transportation services are um, included in the mayor's uh, recommended budget. So now we're at salaries and wages. I think you've adequately yeah. addressed that. Um, so. If a council member has questions as we go through, but the, the um, deputy mayor, if you want to next talk about the next line item that comes up, which is yeah. the FICA city contribution. So but I will say. As he goes to the items where they do have an, a light item, if they're passing over something that does not have something, feel free to raise your hand with a question. Deputy mayor, you have the floor. Yeah, so I will say, you know, the, the FICA contribution, it just is it's taxes. It, it is what it is. Um, and that, that's a, a formulaic answer. Um, so now we get down to building um, maintenance um, supplies, and that is just um, programming. Pro programming, right? So you, you have to have um, paper, you have to have a printer, all of that type of stuff. So $50,000 is budgeted for programming, but the anticipation is that there will be more to come. And then next is $75,000 for other professional services, what should that reflect operationally? So, yeah, so other professional services operationally is going to reflect the idea that there are, there are certain opportunities that we can take advantage of that we would not 
do through our own staffing. So an example of that would be if we wanted to do a um, youth theater in the park program, we would probably contract with an outside vendor to bring those services. So that, that is, it's additional programming, but it's programming that we are not doing through our own staffing, that we are going out of house to contract because it's, it's outside of the um, expertise that our managers and our part-time staff may have. Um, Mr. President, I do have a yes. Councilman Parker, if I may. Uh, and certainly, I, I, I'm looking at a couple, like one is COVID salaries and COVID-19 expenditures. With COVID going back up, okay. should there be some dollars put aside for that particular endeavor? That That is a great question. That is something that we will um, review as necessary. So the way that the, the COVID salaries came to be um, really just goes back to the early stages of the pandemic and trying to figure out, hey, how do we actually get workers um, in place? But then once we figured that out, it became a situation of saying, okay, how do we actually compensate workers for the real um, change in the atmosphere? And that was always meant to be a temporary item, par partially because it, the idea is that, you know, COVID would go away. You are correct in that COVID has not gone away. It has only, you know, changed and it will continue to change. So we can definitely look at that and, and determine, you know, is, is that an area that we need to continue to fund and try and figure out, you know, we need to pay extra funds to continue to have a stable workforce. I will say that it is, it is, it is our hope that we have put enough um, funding in the budget through both salaries and through a, dedication, a dedicated training um, line that we would not need to further augment salaries, but that is definitely something that we will monitor and, you know, if need be, come back to, to council Thank with. You. Thank you. Yes. Um, the next two items that you see, or next few, yes, the next two items that you see are both what uh, I, I call chargebacks. So this is the city allocating a portion of an overall bill to this department, to this funding source. So you're looking at the um, cost of the, the phone system and the cost of the internet system being allocated to this area. Um, printing and bindery services, again, that is so that um, one of the things that has been talked about, you know, in the past, there were um, court, quarterly, yes, uh, quarterly letters that would go out that would say, hey, you know, these are all the summer sports that you can sign up for. These are all of the winter sports. These are all the spring sports. That, that's what that line item essentially is, is for. Um, you then see... Uh, insurance coverage. Deputy Mayor. Yes. Well, I'll, yes. I'll finish this thought before. Well, only I want to say is, <clears throat> is the line of item that you're reading for? Oh print? no, you're right. I'm sorry. There's no print insurance coverage. I, 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 I'm. Yeah. There's. No... That was off. Thank you. Yeah, that was off. Uh, so the insurance coverage, the. Uh, let me see here. The one under insurance coverage is utilities, elect electricity, then utilities, water. Yes. So those are all chargebacks. Okay. Yes, um, Councilman James. Yes, I had a question about the printing and binding. Yes. Services. There's nothing uh, under the 2022-23. Is, is that because you're not going to be notifying? <laughs> about program? No, that 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 is, that is a great question. Um, that that is a, an oversight, and it was probably left out because we 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 don't know exactly what that number would be because we don't have a a um a quarterly magazine put together yet, so we have no idea. Um, I will say that in a different budget, we do have a an idea of a quarterly letter that will go out, but it's not for 
youth rec. It is for something completely um, different. So we can we can plug in that idea here, and that will just take that amount of money that is intended to go to fund balance, and it'll just be a smaller number going to fund balance. Well, this fifty thousand eighty eight was that the previous administration's uh, uh, line item for the the uh, mailings that they did. Uh, the previous line item looks like it was thirteen thousand two hundred eighty two. Yeah, one right. one okay. one oh, yeah. Up. yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. That's the yeah. It's, it's it's difficult without uh okay the 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 bicolored lines. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I call. I have a question. Councilman uh, Nicholson. The uh, so there's a project. So currently the activity through on that printing and binary services. Uh, there's a there's a difference. So are, is we're intending to send out more youth recreation oriented printing and binary, or we? Why are we projecting additional spending there? I don't know that we've sent anything out or intend to. Right. No, so that 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 will not be realized. Okay. That 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 is a uh, formulaic. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Other questions about uh, youth recreation with the recreation facility and youth city events and youth sports, although we won't be utilizing the city events, the little mini line in them going forward. Uh, any uh, questions from the city council on uh, youth recreation more broadly? Obviously, there's a lot more conversations to happen in terms of facilities, in terms of programming, and even potentially other staff uh, items, but with youth recreation, anything further? Councilwoman James. Yes, uh, in, in the, your, um, the, at the start of your budget, the current property taxes you're listing uh, property tax chargebacks and local community stabilization share. Where does the millage come in in terms of actual revenues? It's that very first line. The, so the one which comes in under the 1,033. Yes. Okay. One million. One million thirty-three. I mean, I meant one one million. Yeah. Any further youth recreation discussion, Councilman Nicholson? Uh, you know, I. Of course, understand why there's five hundred thousand dollars out there that's not accounted for in uh, expenses. But I um, want to ask: Are there other departments that we might see a similar phenomena with, where we're we're sort of approving a a, a budget with such not so large? Okay, <laughs> thank you, um, Councilwoman James. Is there any kind of an estimate that you're going to use in, in the budget for grants that may come in? I mean, are we going to project or, or estimate uh, the... No, we intentionally did not um, add grant projections or estimate, uh, uh, estimates because we wanted to be conservative and we wanted to say, you know, if we fall flat on our face we are confident that what we are putting in front of you um was was a rational good attempt we did not we did not want that attempt to be predicated on you're going to bring in 2 million dollars of grants you're going to bring in 500 you know thousand like no we're going to staff this we believe based on our track record that we are going to be able to bring in a lot but if for whatever reason it all just does not work out we will have lessons learned and we believe that this um we we wanted this to be approved not on the the shiny promises but on the the merits of it it made sense to try any further youth recreation questions we now transition to senior recreation. Deputy Mayor Stevens. And so um, in the senior department, um, let me go back here. Anticipated revenues are $372,278. 
uh, the bulk of that coming uh, through property t uh, taxes in the form of the senior activities millage. Yes. $177,438 uh, for uh, the two respective. Uh, so it's essentially, uh, is it spelled out explicitly, those two centers in the senior activities millage, mm -hmm. or is it senior activities millage and it's divided sure. literally in half for Separate our purposes counties. internally? It's, I believe it's just devel divided in half for our purposes. Understood. Okay. So starting at the top, you see the the different um, income that the president just pointed out. So we have $372,000 that we're dealing with. 90000 uh, of that um, is not in the fiscal year to come, but want to celebrate uh, the current and past staff members that made the next 50 initiative grant. So the intention is to expend that in this fiscal year before the fiscal year ends. Is that the game plan? Say that one more time. For the next 50, $90,000, yes. we're, we're trying to get it done in this fiscal year. Yes, yes, we are. Okay, I'm not following you. Uh, you'll see in the revenue category, uh, the fifth line down, next 50 initiative grant. So $90,000, it wasn't okay. when they did the last year's budget, it wasn't in there because they didn't get it yet. Yeah. Um, but it's anticipated that through this current fiscal year, they'll expend all the 90000 mm -hmm. so they aren't accounting for it in the next fiscal year to come. Okay, all right. Yes. Um, so an interesting item that we have here. So you, you have the two different um, senior rec buildings called out for their expenses because their expenses are different. But in general, one of the things that we are doing is that right now there is no general management or oversight of senior recreation and what i mean by that is we have workers at both buildings and they just show up and work there is no overall coordination um so one of the things that this budget calls for is to post and create a position that is the senior recreation manager who will actually oversee the budgets of both senior rec buildings and make sure that we're coordinating activities um, so that we can be more efficient in what we are doing. So that, that, that is the first um, major change that you, actually the first, that is the only major change that you will see. Everything else is pretty much hey, you know, we've got certain activities that we've been doing, we're funding those activities, um, but we just want to be more efficient with um, our reporting structure and making sure that someone is actively overseen and we don't just have people showing up and doing things as they've always been done. Well, it's not just that, in the sense that right now, the senior center's staff reported directly to the mayor, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. But in past, it was it housed under the Department of Public Works for a time, like we discussed with yes. youth recreation? Mm -hmm. Do we know, in many years past, was there ever a standalone senior services department or, or function, or was it always within a larger department? I have to admit um, ignorance on that. Um, oh, okay. I, cause I, I only go back uh, as far as being actively involved in, in city government uh, a little over a decade. So it's also in terms of reorganizing to m make it work better in terms of the overall functionality of the, the city operations yes. and the mayor's office and, and the department heads. That's, That's cool. correct. Hello, sir, are you here for the Board of Appeals meeting? Yeah. It is downstairs in the Shrine Room. <laughs> Sorry, we got three meetings tonight. It's a happening place. <laughs> Uh, but so that's helpful to know that it, you're not proposing any other sort of dramatic wholesale change to the administration of senior recreation apart from the reorganizing of, of staff and the sort of organizational management structure. There are two senior centers. The intention, you know, is operationally there are two senior centers remaining for this fiscal year, uh, continuing with with essentially the same level of service, or is there? just because of budget limitations or any other noteworthy changes that are proposed with this sort of operational year? The only other noteworthy change is the overall 
structure that's being created such that the senior department, the youth department, and the parks department are all being combined with one um, overall uh, director. And then each of those will have a manager. Mayor Grimald, then Councilman Parker, and Councilman Goodman. Uh, I do want to note that, uh, and I believe this is reflected in the budget, but correct me if I'm wrong, Deputy Mayor, um, that because the overall department director for the Parks and Recreation Department will be responsible for three divisions, uh, one of which is the Youth Rec Division, one of which is the um, Senior Center Division or Senior uh, Services Division, and one being the uh, Park. Parks Manager, uh, that the uh, salary and associated costs for employing that director of the Parks and Recreation Department, a third of those costs can be paid for through the Youth Rec Millage, a third through the Senior Center Millage, and a third from the general fund. That is correct. Helpful information. Thank you. Parker, then Goodman. Thank you. My question is real simple. Um, earlier this year, I know there was some grant money I thought of that was that was approved for renovation of both of our senior centers. Would that be all spent, or would that also roll over into the next fiscal year? The vast majority of that should be um, spent, if not all spent, in this in current year. fiscal year. We we are trying to close out those grants as we speak. Councilman Goodman, then Councilman James. Uh, Councilman James. Yes, uh, the formula that you just outlined for the senior center that a third of the cost of the salaries uh, would come from the uh, general fund, a third from the uh, senior millage, and one third from, I can't even see Youth. What, I'm, what I'm reading, there was three. Youth, mill youth millage, senior millage, gen general fund. Okay, so it, w it was actually two. So for, for the seniors, a third of the cost is going to come from the senior millage and then another third from the youth, uh, from the general fund. Uh, no, Councilwoman, that I, c I can understand your uh, confusion. What the mayor was saying is that you have the youth rec division. And it is funded by a youth millage. You have the senior rec division, mm -hmm. and it is funded by a senior millage. And you have a parks division that has no dedicated funding. Those three divisions will live in a new department. Right. And that department head will be funded equally oh. through each of those divisions. Okay. I misunderstood. <laughs> I didn't catch all of it because I yes, ma'am. It, 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 it is it is a lot. If if a part of of this is coming from the general fund, then why w wasn't for the youth rec? Correct. Yes. That that was my thought. So uh, that clarifies for the recreation it. director overall. Yeah. Why yeah. why isn't part of it coming for the youth rec yeah. from the general fund? Because Correct. youth rec has absolutely not one dime coming right. from the general Correct. fund. Yes, ma'am. Yep. That's a whole topic in itself. You know? the, the deputy mayor obviously uh, said that much better than I did, so I'm, I'm glad we clarified. Yeah, that. thank you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I would, uh, when, whenever you deem appropriate, uh, because this question came up under youth recreation, and if you've noticed me being on my phone over here, it's my effort in, in communication with staff to try to get an answer to the question. There was a question asked about Williams International. Uh, and uh, I don't know to what extent. Uh, should I provide some additional information about that now, uh, Mr. President, or would you prefer Without me to wait? Yeah. So uh, there, from what I can gather, um, there was a development agreement entered into between the city and Williams International in connection with a tax abatement for the Williams International property. Uh, and that tax abatement apparently lasts for 15 years. And during that 15-year period, the Williams International agreed to provide $150,000 per year to the city uh, for purposes of uh, technical education, uh, career and technical education for high-skilled manufacturing uh, jobs. 
that uh, so that's the the duration of that that started in 2018 and continues for 15 years meaning it'll end roughly around 2033 the means by which that money is to be appropriated and I have no idea whether or to what extent this was done in the past uh, but uh, is apparently a group of four people, two of whom are uh, representatives of the city to be appointed, it appears, by the mayor, and two of whom are to be designated by Williams International, and the four of them are to work on how this money is to be spent and designated, and that's the process by which that is to occur. Uh, according to the terms of this development agreement. Now, I've, I've been, uh, like I said, texting with staff over here, and so I haven't seen quite the full totality of the development agreement, but I've seen what seem to be the relevant portions of it, and that's the, the best answer I can provide at the moment. So it seems like consensus is that doesn't belong in the youth recreation. Okay. Right. Uh, no. All right, thank you. Um, Councilman Goodman. All right, further discussion on uh, senior... Uh, Recreation. I do want to flag for the finance director um, if it allows, if the system allows us um, to throw an S on the end of Bowen because technically it's Bowen's. Uh, yes. Um, so that's that. Can I just ask? Very minor, but. I, Other I was thinking the same thing, Mr. President, so I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> you know, and with Bowen's. Senior Center, it's a common mistake because of the people are often confused. Is the S on the end of Bowen's or at the beginning of Senior? And it is both, in fact. <laughs> Councilman Nicholson. I'm curious. Um, I know each department uh, director usually, right, they get their, their budget expectations. They have a worksheet and they work through that. Based on the fact that there wasn't this senior recreation manager uh, and a lot of these items are filled in, who, with what, uh, what, what was the activity? Or how how do we engage seniors to build this as well? Or if if there wasn't staff that was actively involved in working out this yeah. budget? So that, that that's a great question. Um, administration did our best to um, speak with the staff at the buildings to say, hey, you know, what activities do you do, and do we need to schedule the same amount of money that you used last year? And that is how we filled this in. But again. The idea is to have going forward an actual position that is not just um, filling in everything, but is actively managing the budgets at the senior centers. I, I ask because I know in other departments' budgets I've seen some major changes and especially I mean, uh, programming or, or, or resourcing. I don't see a lot of changes. I see some reductions. I'm surprised to see that in the, uh, and I mean, is, yeah. did they not have a lot of needs or asks? No, it's, and, and again, it is, it, it is not that there, it, it is not for lack of needs. It is more, if, if you go down to the end, you will see that even with the reductions that we have put in place, um, it is not as if there is no fund balance, but you will see that we are actually going approximately $20,000 into fund balance. And so where you saw the reductions was us um, looking at the current spending pattern and saying, we believe that if this current spending pattern um, holds, we can reduce the amount of money that's spent in those categories. Anything further? Yes. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose I, I just see, you know, all of this opportunity and revenue and potential in the youth category, and I don't see a lot of resource put towards seniors, so it's just... Oh, that, that, that's, that, that's actually uh, a very simple answer. Yeah. Um, the, it goes back to the top line. The youth rec millage produces almost three times the amount of funding that the senior rec millage produces. I understand. I, 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 um, it just seems like business as usual for the seniors, and that's what I, it's. So I'm wondering, is there a plan to really hit grants hard? Is there a plan to, I think budgeting is that time where we get to really 
uh, consider what what sort of resources are we putting towards you know each one of these departments and I think you know this is one where you know while we are going to be you know, investing that ninety thousand dollars and there have been some building upgrades um, I know there's there's still anybody I talk to that utilizes those programs has a lot of dreams and wishes and hopes and goals and aspirations for what we could possibly be doing I, I just uh, wonder what um, is that you know you know what what is what's that plan what's what's how do we how how do we figure that out is if it if it's not to revisit that millage in some way or is it to use arp dollars or are, are we going to be seeing other means of investing in seniors outside of this operating budget mayor grimal has a hand yeah so it's it's a really Im important question uh, because uh, as I've said many times, if you look at a lot of our surrounding communities, they have really amazing state-of-the-art senior centers, and obviously our seniors deserve every bit as good of facilities as those in neighboring communities. Um, I, I think a, a couple of things. One is that uh, community development block grant dollars were programmed to make improvements uh, to, and I know I had to step out to, uh, of the room briefly, but there are a, a couple hundred thousand dollars in addition to that ninety thousand dollars that will be utilized to be making improvements uh, at the senior centers this year as well. So there will be, I think, some very significant, not a complete overhaul, but so, uh, some very significant upgrades to the senior uh, centers. The other thing I would say is we will be considering uh, some big picture things when it comes to the senior centers and uh, maybe in conjunction with youth recreation, maybe in conjunction with the library. Uh, there are uh, available uses potentially for ARP dollars in connection with some of that. Uh, when it comes to actual operations and programming, uh, we want to make sure that we have that senior center manager person in place uh, because, um, like other things, uh, for years now, uh, those folks were really sort of adrift. There, there were, you know, and, and I don't mean that. Hello, from, sir. Are you here for the Board of Appeals meeting? No, here for the medical. Oh, okay. It'll be in this room. We'll be done by 6. And, and I don't mean that. In you, could be, you can hang out inside or out. Your call. And, and I don't mean that in terms of be, because of, of them. I mean, there was no clear leadership or, or, or chain of, of command, as you would say in the Navy, Pastor Councilman Parker. Uh, Air Force, I'm sorry, forgive me. Wow, uh, that's, uh, don't judge me because of that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, and so, you, you know, it's the fact that, that you had four or five individuals there sort of nebulously reporting to the mayor's office obviously didn't make any sense and it didn't lend itself to cohesive action. And so having an actual parks and recreation department with the director, having an actual uh, senior center division with the senior center manager is really essential as we actually look for concerted strategic direction for our senior centers moving forward. And so we're really excited about our proposal to establish a senior center division with a manager so that we can, in collaboration with that individual, really look towards some longer term strategic vision when it comes to programming and operations. So the finance uh, committee is going to be taking a deep dive into the fund balance categories. Yes. Um, and we, of course, in the future, will see the plan for ARP. If there are a couple hundred thousand dollars from CDBG dollars that are currently in motion or, or, or going to be making an impact, how are those accounted for? Where are they accounted for? And what should we be looking at that separately? Yes, we should be looking at that separately. Um, they're not accounted for in this budget because, again, right now, all of those ARP dollars. ARP CDBG. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. all of all of the CDBG dollars all of the um, ARPA dollars are in a different um, funding source that we're not currently asking you to allocate right 
So um, are the CDBG dollars separate from the fund balance as well? Are they, that's a separate, they're held, are they so held by the at, county, so, so they're accounted by the county? Correct. Okay. Is that something we can also put on the finance committee's agenda to take that a look is at definitely what's something there can... and where yes. things are at? So we just have, a, I think, the biggest picture, right? I mean, we're looking at this, and I could see we look at this, we you know, we, we make steps to approve this, and then people are left thinking, well, that's just it. And I think there's all of these nuanced things that, you know, that it would be good to tie it with a bow just for, you know, not community benefit, but for No, so, so uh, that, that's us. actually a, a, a very good point, and it won't take me very long to um, shed some light on on that so as the mayor said there's over two hundred thousand dollars of cdbg dollars right now that are programmed to go into the um senior facilities in addition to that um every year council has the opportunity to look at cdbg funding and um pick which how you want to allocate those funds and so um the funding for this year, the previous council decided that it would spend, it would allocate all of that funding toward um, sidewalk repair. Now, it is entirely up to this council if you want to leave all of that money in sidewalk repair or if you want to reprogram some of it to some other activity. But in addition to that, as the mayor said, um, and as you pointed out, uh, Councilman, there are there is money in the fund balance of the senior millage um we did not other than the twenty thousand dollars just to you know maintain a certain level of operations we did not dig into that because we wanted to have the manager's position in place to actually say hey here is how you efficiently spend that money as opposed to saying having separate staff saying, we need this here, we need this here, and we duplicate services unnecessarily. Sometimes you need to duplicate services. Each place needs to have its own kitchen. But sometimes you don't need to duplicate services. There may be activities, there may be items that bridge both buildings. So instead of trying to put lots of money in each building, we wanted to wait to have a manager who was over the operation to say, this is how you efficiently spend those funds. Thank you. Councilwoman James? Yeah, and, I, and of course, uh, those that are in the chamber can know, but Councilman Rutherford is present and voting with us. Yes. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I understand your um, strategy of wanting to get the manager on board, but in these budget sessions, you know, it's okay for us to just talk about what the hope is and yes. what the Absolutely. vision is. My concern here uh, with both the the recreation as well as the uh, senior uh, budget is that in the past, the city has just simply said, you know, whatever the millage amount is, we're going to spend what that millage gives us. And we don't seem to really envision beyond that. And I'm not sure, you know, first of all, is this, no, is this typical for municipalities that for something as crucial as youth recreation, as cru crucial, you know, as uh, senior uh, centers and senior support, that we only do what we have available in the millage, that there is no discussion about uh, any other avenues? So I'm, I'm concerned about that for these millages. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we really need to carve a, a new pattern going forward as to how we look at funding senior citizen uh, uh, buildings, how we look at funding our youth departments and other things, because we can't just simply say, you know, if, if the millage doesn't pay for it, then it doesn't happen. That, that is uh, a great point. And so to that point, I will say uh, a couple of things. One, that is why we are creating the grants department so that we can actively have staff that goes out and looks for that funding. Um, as I stated before, we did not include any outcome of that funding in this budget because we don't know yet. Um, we know what we're going to go after. We don't have any good way to anticipate 
how much of what we're going to go after we're actually going to receive. So we didn't want to create um, false visions of, of what would happen. Uh, additionally, I would say that you're, you're correct. We, we cannot just say, hey, this is what the millage does. And so this is this is what we are are willing to invest. And that goes back to the whole idea that we are trying to invest in the city to spur growth in the city so that we actually end up with a general overall population and um, taxation growth so that our general fund is actually capable of supporting these activities that it actually supported in the past. And, and just to, to amplify that point a little bit, I agree with your point, which is we shouldn't take a position of, well, we can't spend anything more in whatever area than is generated from a millage. Uh, that obviously doesn't make sense. Just as we spend general dollars in a number of priority areas, there's no reason why we can't prioritize uh, certain areas that are already getting funding from a designated millage and use general fund dollars there. So I, I completely and fundamentally agree with that principle. Uh, I would say, though, a, a couple of things. One is some of what I'll call the, the underperformance uh, in these areas may be because of lack of sufficient funding, but in some cases it's because positions have gone unfilled. In some cases it's because the organizational structure has not lent itself to long-term strategic planning. So I don't think we should automatically assume that it's lack of funding. That's number one. And I think once we get this organizational structure in place and we get staffing in place, we'll, we'll quickly get a better sense of how much of the problem is, 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 has been staffing or organizational structure versus lack of funding. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, these areas, youth recreation especially, but also senior programming, are areas that are ripe for private foundation dollars and funding from other layers of government. So before we uh, immediately jump and start allocating general fund dollars, we want to exhaust those other avenues because these areas, like I said, more than any other area probably, are areas where we can get funding from other levels of government and from private foundations. And obviously general fund dollars are scarce. Uh, and we're trying to reduce the uh, projected deficit, not, not increase it. So to the extent that we can address underperformance through structural changes in organization, staffing adequately and appropriately, and getting dollars from other sources other than the city's general fund, I would strongly urge us to pursue those avenues first before allocating scarce general fund dollars to these purposes when we have a lot of pressing needs in the city. Councilman James on follow-up, and then Rutherford and Carrington. Yeah, um, I, I, I think what we need, though, uh, Mayor Grimal, is to, you know, because the budget is like <laughs> numbers here, and, and that doesn't really tell residents a lot, just looking at a sheet with a bunch of numbers on it. What we really need to do is is really make some kind of a real definitive statement to the residents in terms of how, what we see going forward for senior services. Just, you know, just with the same things that you have said, that as uh, an administration, this is our statement of of goals for this department. And I think that would help a lot to alleviate people's concerns about, you know, the, the department. Because as a senior myself, yes, and as someone who, you know, uh, uh, I've got senior friends, there's a concern there that it's what we don't pay for, we don't get. And I'm a, I'm a homeowner, I'm a taxpayer in the city of Pontiac, so I, what you're saying to me is, my tax dollars pay for absolutely, you know, nothing when it comes to senior services. If I, if that senior millage is not able to pay for it, then I don't get it. And I, I think that's how most seniors 
in the city field. You know, we feel that that millage is the only thing that allows us uh, a space to be able to do the things that we want to do. And I don't think that is really how other municipalities view those kinds of services. And I'm concerned that, you know, this is what we have locked into, but this administration has made different promises. We as individual council people have talked to our constituents and we all feel that we want to go a different way here. But that needs to be stated. You know, that needs to be a part of your, your budget process that you actually state what your intent is with respect to uh, senior services. And that's just a comment. You know that we don't we don't have to spend any time at. But yeah. we need to make things more explicit about the direction that we want to go because you've got a lot of things going, and I feel very positive about you know getting a manager on board and these other things. But at the same time, we need to make a definitive statement to the community that we want to go a different direction with with these kinds of things. We agree, uh, and you know I certainly tried to articulate that uh, this evening briefly, but I think your, your point is to really put an exclamation mark on that by laying out in, in greater detail with, with not just short-term but medium-term and longer-term vision exactly what we're talking about. And we agree with that, but we also believe that we need to have the staff on board first to help mm -hmm. us develop that. I understand. Yeah, and, um, but we strongly agree. Uh, and. Um, you know, we, we also, to your, to your initial point, we want to benchmark what other communities do, both in terms of how much money they spend in total and per capita on seniors and where they get those, those funds from. So we, and, and that's true for youth rec as well. So we're, we're happy to, to look at what other communities do so that we can better answer that aspect of your question. Obviously, uh, we've got a couple different pools of taxpayer money, all of which ultimately come from the taxpayers, whether it's the senior millage or the youth millage or the general fund dollars. They're all being generated from our tax dollars, so we want to make sure that we're good stewards of those taxpayer dollars on behalf of our residents. Uh, this year, though, alone, I do want to just note, we are spending several hundred thousand dollars in dollars and in funds for senior centers that go above and beyond the senior millage. And that's through the, um, the uh, uh, 50 grant, it's through the CDBG dollars. So we are in fact spending this year several hundred thousand dollars in, in grant dollars beyond the senior millage. Uh, Councilman Rutherford is next. Uh, to clarify, when does the senior activities millage expire? When would it need to be considered for renewal? Do we have that available? I don't have it in front of me, but actually all of the special millages expire at the same time. I think it's 24. It was 10 years. I thought it was 26. I think it's yeah. next. Okay. It, it, it's either 23 or, or, or 24, you know, the, the COVID years have really, <laughs> it's every four years, and I believe it's either coming up next year or the year after. It's 10 years. It's 10 years? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd have to look. Okay. Councilman Rutherford. So um, the average recreational senior manager in Michigan makes between $43,645 $674 with the HR. Have you analyzed how much we're paying our senior recreational manager? And if so, what are y'all going to do to improve the payment? Of it? That's the first question. We don't have a senior recreation manager as of right now, this budget cost to uh, create that position. Okay. So do we not have anyone in the house that could do that position? Here we are. So my question is, is this yesterday, last night we gave, uh, we increased, uh, we created a job for 90,000, correct? Was that not the amount, uh, Mayor Grimer, was it 90,000? So we, the, we, we actually didn't. So okay. the, the previous mayor filled okay. a position that didn't have a budget for it and, but started paying the person $94,000, uh, and that's what the previous mayor did. Right. And we uh, sort of retroactively and for the duration of this fiscal year 
uh, approved that that salary. So for the next month and a half, approve that salary. Right. Our proposed budget actually calls for eliminating that position. I just got to, that part. Just to be clear. Okay. Um, to to but yes, we we approved a practice that the previous mayor started uh, for the remainder of this fiscal year of that salary amount for the position of deputy finance director. Um, we don't currently have a senior center manager position. We are proposing to create that position, okay. and then we will actually post it first for internal candidates. Okay. Uh, we are not saying that we don't have someone internal who could uh, fill that position. Uh, in fact, it's, it's quite plausible, so maybe likely, that one of our existing senior center staff mm -hmm. could fill that position and would be the best fit for that position. Okay. And there, I'm asking that to make sure that we go, we try to follow, uh, we are, we're so big on paying people what they're worth. And so that's an issue for me when I know that people are not in my, I thought they were the senior, I didn't know y'all just created this position. I thought that they always ran, because every time I see them, they're running the whole senior center. So I apologize. I thought that was already created. However, um, my point is making sure that we're paying them adequately. Number two, you, uh, um, I, I want to discuss, and I wanted to, I don't have my budget in front of me because I ran in front of, um, but I want to discuss recreation. Have y'all already went past that so we can't go back to it? Well, we're on, <clears throat> okay, We're on got, senior like major questions. Senior recreation, and if we can, uh, we are leaving at six o'clock. Okay. Well, then and I want. We have to allow for public comment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but we may other senior recreation um, discussion. Okay, I didn't know that, so my apologies. I was trying to watch it and not get wrote up. However. Um, I'll just put my questions to you offline, but I do have some major questions about the budgeting, the youth, some of the uh, youth management pro, uh, positions. Not we may too, still have time to go back. Yeah, not too keen on that. But um, for seniors, I'm trying to understand for your recommended budget where the compensation is coming for essentially the four and then a third. So the senior recreation uh, manager, three senior specialists, and then paying one third of the recreation director's salary, what line items should I be looking for? I see under Ruth Peterson Senior Center, salaries and wages, 13,000 and some change. You know, there's, there's overtime wages in there as well, but then I go down for the Bowen Senior Center, I see salaries and wages, 33,000 and change, 2,000 and change for overtime wages. Where would I see the balance of that is that coming from the an, another sort of personnel line item in the general fund, and that's why it's not reflected in the senior activities millage. Director Carrington. Okay. And so to recap, that was finance director for the city of Pontiac, Darren Carrington, stating that further information will be coming, but that uh, that there are general fund resources that will be used for for those staff, some of those staffing. Okay. Other senior recreation discussion. I think that strategically, uh, Councilman James makes a very good point in terms of intentionally identifying where do we want to go, what are, where do we aspire to have quality senior recreation in our community, what does that look like, and then have the future budgets align with that, and that this is a very important step with reorganizing recreation in our city broadly so that way it's given the, the proper support and oxygen to be able to thrive, to be able to plan, uh, because that it is it is hindered by not having that that support in the past. Councilman Goodman. And to just further build upon the points of my colleagues, um, it, I think it's extremely important to be as, uh, and I don't mean, mean this term in its actual sense, as participatory with this budget as possible with the citizens, especially when it comes to areas like uh, recreation because recreation is very dependent upon the person who you are trying to provide recreation for 
Um, so I, I do think that um, it's extremely important going forward to make sure that we're uh, communicating uh, those long-term goals with the citizens uh, in a better way and also with council because this is uh, this is still very difficult to read no matter how much knowledge you have reading finance yeah. and no matter what there is a better way to communicate this information not only to the people who are doing this job but the people in the community who aren't even as experienced as some of us may not already be reading this. Um, but then again, just making sure that when we're going to them and we're uh, discussing these things, because even if they look at, at the, uh, the budget itself, they see all these uh, line items and numbers, but these line items and numbers uh, don't have a very, very clear and concise way of looking at them to the community as a whole. Um, so just going forward, that is extremely uh, paramount. Uh, not only for uh, just just recreation as a whole, but for all of the city's budgeting. Other discussion on senior recreation, Councilman James. Um, just uh, not necessarily senior recreation, but I would suggest that uh, in our budget or in our uh, spreadsheet here, where we have the uh, information about the millage, that we actually say their millage, because you know. Um, to put something else there, uh, current current property taxes, that doesn't necessarily say to someone totally unfamiliar with If you budget, look at the... But they know they are paying for a millage, you know, so it would be good to put that, you know, in at that line item so people who are looking online uh, can actually see the amount of the millage that's being collected. The report that's been run for us is Fund 212 Senior Activities Millage at the top. So this essentially is the senior activities millage. Right. So it's showing us the the revenue. I, I hear what you're saying. I oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I didn't even see that. No. But it's still, you know, for you to look at senior activities millage and then automatically connect current property taxes with this is the amount of that millage. Do you see what it's sure. kind of what Mikhail was saying, that everybody doesn't have that level of expertise with reading budgets and budgets need to be as user friendly you know as possible and I think that would that would make it to, to just have millage in the line item itself would simplify things quite a bit <coughs> pardon me others uh, senior recreation discussion just to clarify it goes to 2026 the millage. 2026 is when okay. the senior activities millage sunsets or yeah. would need to be renewed by oh, or sorry. an expansion and the same for youth recreation youth recreation is here okay you said but so that. that's helpful so yes. for senior it's 2026 mm -hmm. senior activities millage uh, that the voters of Pontiac have authorized uh, hearing no further discussion at this juncture for senior recreation we now turn to the parks manager role administration uh, very clear, straightforward. Um, there are the the parks manager will be um, the position is scheduled to be created. It will be filled. Once that position is filled, they will be um, provided with a number of different ideas that we have on on the shelf right now. We have a parks master plan. We have parks grants that we are actively. Uh, looking to bring in to to bring in we have some park um expansion projects that are already underway such as the clinton river trail we will allow that individual to look at all of the things that we have going on and then make recommendations as to you know what type of additional funding is needed what type of additional staffing is needed to actually bring us to a point where we are providing the level of service that is appropriate for our community. Any discussion about parks manager? Councilman Parker. Well, I just had a, a question. I noticed that as you look at the parks manager, you, you included the FICA contribution, but would you not be giving medical insurance and life insurance to that person as well? Oversight, thank you. And dental insurance, all, the, all them uh, benefits package. <clears throat> Any other parks manager discussion? 
What I'm going to do now is is provide the opportunity for public comment. Were there any requests before this uh, meeting began uh, for public comment that we received? And then uh, just for the, the sake of, since it's an open meeting, are there any members from the public who would like to address uh, the City Council tonight? It is your opportunity, going once, going twice, going three times. Um, so we have uh, delved through the recreation section. Uh, our intention was to also have the executive office um, budget hearing, uh, which is the formal title for the mayor and his uh, direct mayor's office staff, mayor and deputy mayor. Uh, but we will redetermine. We will find a new home for that. And luckily, it's the one where those in the know will be here at the various other hearings uh, and uh, meeting, so we may, if windows of time emerge, we may be able to insert it where appropriate. Um, what I want to do now is uh, give our final 10 minutes or so. We will be adjourning um, before 6 p.m. There is a, a medical marijuana appeal uh, commission meeting that is happening in this very chamber. So when we adjourn, we are going to be very polite neighbors and swiftly scoop up every uh, bit of paper, et cetera, and make our swift exit. Um, Further discussion and essentially like open closing comments um, when it comes to uh, recreation, which we've covered with youth recreation, senior recreation, and the parks manager, legislative council sharp. Just a quick question for the administration. With recreation and culture, is the Phoenix Center parking not a part of that? Are you doing that separately? Can you say that question again? I didn't hear you. For recreation and culture, I had the Phoenix Center parking. Is that not a part of it? Is it going to be in a different area? I had questions for that. Yeah, m meaning the amphitheater on top of the parking structure? Uh, in terms of some of the line items that you guys have for that, um, such as like the electricity, we're still, are we still budgeting for the electricity for that? So, that would be yes, separate. It's, 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 it's separate. It is, it, is, it is not part of these budgets. Okay, so. So you'll just want to flag for us when, yes. when yeah. the particular bucket, um, yes. when right. that would be the appropriate time for us to do a, a further, right. yes. and it, you know where it makes sense strategically, yep. feel free to identify that as we go forward. Thank you, Legislative Council Sharp. Councilwoman Rutherford. Um, just want to make sure that the questions that I have, um, would you prefer that I give them to you uh, email or uh, off, uh, offline? Because, uh, and also- Email is fine. Secondly, um, when I asked for the individuals, what each individual make, would that be a part of the executive, uh, the request I put in? Do you have a timeline on when that's going to be done? The request I asked you for last night. In, uh, well, I don't know that you and I had a conversation no, no. about that. No, 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 no. Me and me. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, so again, um, Councilwoman, as, as I stated last night, mm -hmm. the information is not organized in that fashion and as soon as we have the opportunity to organize it in that fashion, we will. Can we can it get it before we have it, the actual meetings about that? We, we do have, as you know, and we have distributed all council members, a list of the amounts made by each position. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking for some different yeah. information? In the previous uh, uh, packet that I've seen before, they have what each person makes. How much they're making things it's 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 it's, 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 it's itemized so that's what i want i want to item, i'm asking for an itemized list. well i think i think we have that uh as part of your budget book we've listed all of the individual positions mm -hmm. that we're proposing for the coming year's budget with a specific salary for each and every one of those positions yeah that's what i'm asking. so she's looking for prior payroll records prior payroll. I want to see because for one example, one job was listed as fifty-three thousand, and a new a projected budget it says sixty thousand. I want to understand how that happened. So I'm just trying to get to be at apples. I'm trying to compare what's happening, past, why we do an increase, make it make sense. That's all. So to to make it make sense, if you the the best way to make it make sense mm -hmm. is to um, provide the position that you're you're asking about okay and then we can actually go back and say you know why was that position slated for whatever increase it was slated for right that's what i okay that's what i want thank okay. you okay perfect a, a question that uh on that point that may be helpful for us in the community 
uh, I can't remember if you shared it at last night's council meeting, but that uh, you are trying to comprehensively incorporate um, pay increases for city employees. Um, three to three percent. Three percent. Right, I got that part. Right. So, so there, there is a general three percent um, cost of living uh, wage increase that is being suggested. There are then um, some positions. So every position, even part-time positions, need to be making um, at a bare minimum fifteen dollars an hour. But beyond that, there are other positions where um, Councilwoman Rutherford had given the average wages uh, of a position in Michigan. And so we're looking at some positions that are outside of those pay bands and trying to move them into the cr proper pay band. And that is an important point. Uh, in the past, uh, some positions, mostly part-time positions, I think only part-time positions, were being paid less than $15 per hour. Mm -hmm. I made the decision to make sure that we had a city minimum wage moving forward in our proposed budget of $15 per hour. Other open comments on youth, senior, and park recreation? I mean, I, I think that many residents uh, taking a step back will recall and, and, and can vouch for it from personal experience, but there's a great deal of uh, missed opportunity and missed recreation that residents have had to experience for many years because of uh, the slashing of resources and the decimating of the city's tax base. I'm grateful that we are creating a roadmap for rebuilding that, beginning that rebuilding. And I just want to say thank you to the employees, present and past, that have allowed us to continue to provide uh, a level of senior recreation and youth recreation uh, to the capacity that the resources did allow and uh, as Councilwoman James and other, all of our colleagues um, have expressed in the past, we want to make sure that the resources and the staffing, as much as we're able, align with our priorities for ensuring that youth recreation, senior recreation, and parks, the utilization of our parks, um, are of a standard that our residents deserve. Other uh, discussion on recreation. This is the first time that in many years that there is a straight up recreation department and uh, as was shared earlier that there is a lot more budgetary decisions that will need to be made um, particularly with youth recreation um, even beyond this particular cycle. Pro Tem Carrington. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were oh, yeah. hand. <laughs> Others that wish to have, <laughs> no. Others that wish to have the floor on this uh, budget special meeting. Clerk Doyle, would you like to share for us in the community when's the next uh, budget special meeting? I'm sorry. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, Thursday, May 19th. Oh, your turn. And what time? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock? All right. Pro Tem Carrington and Mayor Grimal. Tomorrow I have. I have four. Four to six. Four to six. Oh, four. Yeah, it's four p.m. to six p.m. Friday is three to yeah. six. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Four to six. Friday is three. I yeah, four Friday to six. Four. And no, we no. changed. Friday is three. Wait, wait. Thursday, Does the record reflect Thursday, May 19th? 19th, four to six, and the focus will be fire, public safety, and law. And then Friday. And May then 20th, Friday, May 20th, three the to focus six. will three to six. Focus on grants and community development, which is planning, building, and economic development being merged mm -hmm. into one. Thank you. Pro Tem Carrington? Yeah, it's just a quick uh, statement. Hopefully, uh, the, the rest of our, our, our meetings, have you guys already formulated um, the sections so we can have it in advance? Uh, like today, uh, this section came like a, like an hour ago. Yes, sir. No. So well, all of the information is in the general book that we gave you. Um, and what we were doing is at, at, for each night, we were bringing you the individual um, sections for that night in case you did not have your book with you. Yeah. But everything was oh, delivered. I, I realize yes. everything's in the book, but it's not broken down in sections. So it's like going through a whole, it's, it goes a little, it's like going through the whole, whole book trying to figure out what we're studying for the next, so, next section. Maybe so. a 
a suggestion could be, could we just get an email of each section with just the account numbers? So that way we know what to study for the next hearing. So what, what we, can, we, we can definitely do that, but um, since we were going to print them out anyway, what we can do is um, get them all reprinted out tomorrow. But if we do that, if we get them all reprinted out tomorrow, we will essentially be giving you a second book, but that second book will be organized in a different fashion. Basically, for, like for, like for tomorrow. If you email those, I'm I'm okay. Okay. Know, so, so yeah. is is it's everyone okay for us to just email you? If it's on off this. You know, I, I, I need if it needs to be ahead of time because when I come in here, I, yeah. I understand. Nice. Hold on, pause. I already know that was in the book, but what I'm saying is it still needs to be ahead of time. It gives it, you know what I'm saying. Go ahead. To clarify, what, what I was trying to explain before is that when you give them the section, so yes, they've gone through the book, like I've gone through the book, mm -hmm. I've tabbed it, yeah. but it's a hundred and some pages, right? So you need to have just what's in front of you for that day ahead of time, because if not, then you're flipping through all the pages during the hearing. Well, this so sounds like an individual them. preference. Yeah. I think that we should each express what our individual preference is. I had no problem going through my book. I mean, Thank you. Mayor Grimley, you had a hand? Well, it, it dawned on me after the fact uh, that I maybe should clarify what I said because I don't want the general public misunderstanding. When I, when I said we're proposing a city minimum wage of $15 per hour, I mean for city employees. Uh, 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 I, I do support a, a uh, minimum wage for everyone of at least $15 per hour, but uh, under state law, we don't even have the legal ability to do that for our city. Uh, so I did just want to make sure that uh, I'm, uh, people aren't getting too high of expectations. <laughs> I'm talking about four city employees. Other closing comments? All right. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Support. Moved by Parker, seconded by Goodman uh, to adjourn uh, this special meeting of the Pontiac City Council. Hearing no discussion, roll call Clerk Doyle. Yes. Nicholson? Yes. Parker? Yes. Rutherford? Carrington? Yes. Goodman? Yes. James? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. That motion carries. We are adjourned at 5.58 p.m. Let's make a swift and clean exit for uh, the commission that immediately follows. For the piece that we're going to discuss tomorrow, he's going to email.